In this video, we are going to talk about dependency injection. In the past two videos, you have seen that we have been using dependency injection. And when we are using dependency injection, one of the first thing you see here is that instead of instantiating an instance of the repository directly inside the class, right, inside the method here, we are feeding the instance of the inventory repository from outside. And if we go to the component, we can see that we didn't use the new keyword to create instance of the use case. Instead, we're also using dependency injection to feed the instance of this class from outside. So what is really dependency injection? I have explained this concept in different courses using different ways. Uh, in this course, I'm going to use again another way to explain dependency injection. Right, so for example, we have our use case here. And this use case class needs to use the repository class. Typically, without dependency injection, you would create this repository class instance right inside the use case. By doing that, the use case class is responsible for controlling the lifespan of repository, which creates a closely coupled relationship. The use case class needs to know the definition of the repository class. As soon as the repository class gets changed, the use case class will need to change accordingly or at least gets recompiled in order to keep up with the change of the repository. Basically, the higher class will need to be responsible for a lot of things for the lower level class. And when this use case is used within the Razor component without dependency injection, the same thing would happen. And in that case, our Razor component will also have to be responsible for instantiating the use case class and be responsible for managing the lifespan of the use case class, which again creates a closely coupled relationship between the Razor component and the use case. So you can see that without dependency injection, you have a chain of classes all chained together and knows each other one by one by one. And all of them are closely coupled. So when we have dependency injection, what actually happens is that we have all of these classes registered within the framework. So we have our framework right here. And then instead of having our use case here inside the Razor component, our use case is registered in our framework. Of course, our repository is also registered within the framework. Now, when our Razor component is initialized by the framework, the framework sees that the Razor component requires an instance of the use case. And then it goes into its service collections and it sees that the use case is registered in the service collection. So the framework is then responsible for creating an instance of this use case class and then feed that instance of the use case class to the Razor component. While it's creating the instance of the use case class, it notice that the use case class also requires an instance of the repository class. And because it's also noticed that the repository class is as well is registered with the framework as well. So it is able to create an instance of the repository class and feed that class to the use case. Therefore, it completes the creation of this chain of dependencies and then inject the use case into the Razor component. And the Razor component is then able to use the instance of that use case class to complete the logic, the business logic that the Razor components requires. And let's again look at the code. So we have our Razor component, which is this page component that represents the index page. The Razor component uses the inject directive to tell this particular component requires an instance of this view inventories by name use case abstraction. And then we can see that in our program.cs where we do our dependency injection, we have a map between 
the abstraction and the implementation. So when the component is initialized, the framework will then provide an instance of this view inventories by name use case class. And then if we go to the implementation of this class, you can see that the use case also requires an instance of the I inventory repository abstraction. And then if we go to the program.cs, we can see that we registered a mapping between the abstraction and the concrete implementation. So you see that the sequence of dependency injection is from the razor component to the use case and then to the plugin that is plugged into the use case. In this case, it's our in-memory plugin right here. So this is dependency injection. And this dependency injection enables our clean architecture. It enables us to be able to create a repository, right, a data store layer as a plugin that is plugged into the core of our clean architecture, which includes the use case as well as the entities, right, the, the core business layer. But what are these add singletons and add transient methods? These are for lifetime management. Remember that when we register our use case class and repository classes uh, into our framework, we offload the lifetime management from the higher level class or component to the lower level class. And we allow our framework to provide us with an instance of the, the class. And when the framework does that, the framework needs to know when the object of the class needs to be disposed. And that's when we need to use these methods to indicate, to tell the framework how long these instances need to live. So let's first look at transient. As the name indicates, whenever we require an instance of the class, it will create us with the instance of the class. So it's very simple. The framework itself does not store the instance of the class anywhere. Whereas comparing that to the singleton, when our application requires an instance of this concrete implementation, it will not only just create an instance and provide that instance to our application, but also store that instance in the application. And that instance will stay there for as long as the application is running. So when multiple users require an instance of this abstraction, the same instance will be provided to each one of those users, right? And it's the same copy, not different copies. So comparing that with the transient, transient, when different users are asking for a copy of this abstraction, those users will get their own copy. And there's actually another lifetime management method, which is called add scoped. In Blazor server, uh, we have this scoped concept. We go to this diagram, we can see that we have this signal R channel. When we say a object of a class that is injected into our framework has a scoped lifetime, it really means that the instance of that class, right? the instance of this, uh, whatever we are creating, for example, if we are creating this as a scoped, it just means that this instance will be not only created and provided to the application to be used, but also stored in the application. But it will only be stored for as long as the lifetime of the SignalR channel. For example, if we use the refresh button in the browser, it will disconnect the SignalR channel or reconnect the SignalR channel. So when it disconnects the SignalR channel, that instance of the object will be also disposed at the same time. But once the instance is created and stored along with the SignalR channel, as long as the SignalR channel is not interrupted, is not recreated or disconnected, when you require an instance of this object, it will uh, be retrieved and reused, right? It will not recreate another instance of the abstraction like the add transient method. These are the three different types of lifetime management for dependency injection in Blazor server. Uh, in Blazor WebAssembly, 
the scoped and singleton are the same thing. They are the same thing because there's no signal R channel. There's nothing to do with the server. So you can't have a singleton concept, right? Each browser has its own copy of the code and the own copy of the framework. So that means the scoped and the singleton lifetime measurement are the same for Blazor WebAssembly.